news in South Los Angeles. You see that uh, van there that uh, has just exited the uh, southbound 110 freeway in South Los Angeles being pursued by a black and white unit. We really don't have a whole lot of details at this point. We do know uh, we have Sky 5 overhead and we'll check in with Mark when he's ready. But we do know that Whoa. this vehicle or van, I guess you could say, was on the 110 freeway and now appears to be going very fast uh, on some surface streets. And that's always a dangerous thing because there's red lights and people crossing streets and, you know, all sorts of things that pose all kinds of problems when we're watching a pursuit. And it looks like it's pulling into, well, it looks like another street, another, another neighborhood street. street. Yeah. And of course, when you get on those uh, streets like that, they get really tight. You see yeah. some pedestrians right there now turning onto another street. Uh, he's just probably just kind of going around in circles right now and probably looking for some place to dump the vehicle. Let's go up to uh, Sky 5 and Mark Kona, who's actually been uh, following this for uh, quite a few minutes now. Mark, what can you tell us? Uh, Glenn and Jessica, yeah, we just came up on this about a minute ago here. This is a stolen vehicle, a van, a white cargo van here that was uh, reported stolen out of uh, the South L.A. area just uh, minutes ago now. We actually caught this uh, uh, van as they, as you guys were coming to our picture when it was northbound on the uh, 110 freeway. Now, for a time, this thing was going southbound on the 110 freeway. This initiated right near the Coliseum. So just to give you an idea where we are going here, we are northbound on surface streets here, just kind of paralleling the 110 freeway on the west side, heading back over towards the original area where this pursuit began and now he's just uh, collided with uh, a car as well as a central division uh, officer of the LAPD here now he is backing up it looks like he is trying to evade arrest here uh, we will see what he attempts to do it looks like he's going to be making his way southbound he was just northbound on that very street now he's going southbound it looks like he's made his way out of uh, that particular head of him here he's going to be coming up on that interchange right now and uh, as you can oh. see there he is he's just collided with a vehicle here he's just collided with cross traffic here corner. right at the intersection of Washington and so uh, police units are behind him he's going to try and get away here and does he? He sure does. Oh, my gosh. So now he's going to be eastbound on Washington. He somehow, uh, wow, wiggles his way out of the front of him. Uh, basically, cars that are getting off the freeway, he's going to try and shimmy around on the right shoulder there. It looks like he's, mm. wow, he's just kind of pushing cars out of the way, trying to get through. And, uh, you know, other cars don't want to get involved in this. And so they're going to move out of the way. And that uh, seems to be the case. He's made his way to the front of the line and just passed uh, all of those cars who are waiting to move off the freeway here. So now he's going to be, Smartly. he is westbound on Jefferson just on the north side of the campus of USC, and I believe he's going to be coming up on Vermont, and uh, he is now kind of shimmying through traffic there, and uh, he might have uh, he might have uh, collided with a couple of those cars here. Now southbound on uh, Vermont, uh, just on the west side of the campus of USC now, and uh, again, this guy just uh, has shown us that he will do absolutely anything uh, necessary to uh, to evade capture here. And you said you saw him on the cell phone so earlier. He was messing around with something when you zoomed in there. Um, but, you know, another thing that, that no one knows is whether this person's armed. Mm -hmm. You know, he could very well be. They just probably don't know all those details at that point, which makes it um, incredibly difficult to handle a situation like this. Well, it looks like he's okay. now turning okay. on Exposition he's Boulevard. Bound. Eastbound. Eastbound Expo. Yeah, he's now on Exposition Boulevard. Uh, mm. The USC campus uh, is over there <sighs> to, the, to the right. You see the uh, the metro. He looks train wedged there. in between this. Yeah, yeah. He might be getting stuck in between these two vehicles here. Yeah. We're going to make our way northbound and see if we can see some of the activity. Yeah, for a time he was wedged, but now he's kind of made his way through traffic there. He's on exposition now, turning southbound onto a smaller street here, basically on the south side of the USC campus here. Mm. All and right, he's coming up on the Coliseum on the west side. Go ahead. No, you just hate to see it around the campus, too, because so many students are out walking I know. to and from class. Well, that, uh, there was that, there's that one intersection in Jefferson, and uh, you can see, as a matter of fact, you can see the L.A. Coliseum right there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's actually, he's inside of Exposition Park right now, the Coliseum on the one side, the, uh, the, the soccer fields, and he's going by the, uh, the old um, swimming pool from the 32 Olympics. Now he's off of that property, and he's... Uh, He's down in side streets down in South L.A. now, south of the Coliseum. And these are some tight streets. And now, again, you got to start worrying about pedestrians. And it really doesn't appear Absolutely. To, to have caused any difficulty with operating this vehicle with all the damage yeah. that this van has sustained at this point. You would think it would be a lot more difficult. Well, he came around that one corner we saw uh, earlier and slammed into the black and white unit and another vehicle head on.
and uh, hit him really hard, backed up, took off. Yeah, Tower TV5. And went I through that other intersection TV5 and, uh, you know, hit that SUV just a couple of minutes ago. And, and again, it looked like that was going to be the end of it. Uh, you know, black and white units were right on top of him, but he still managed to maneuver and get out and escape again. Yeah. But look at the damage on the front end. I mean, yeah. it's completely exposed. I'm surprised that the radiator okay. yeah. is not leaking water and, and he has an oh, open. Yeah. Oh, now he's going in an alley. This this will be interesting okay. here. Uh, that could uh, lead to a dead end or something. And also, for those of you who don't know, Mark Kono is flying a helicopter and he's also talking to air traffic control and keeping out of the way of... LAPD that's in the sky and all sorts of things. So he's juggling many things as well. That's what you're hearing. Okay, back uh, northbound as well. Back northbound. Well, it looks like he may be slowing down. Yeah, I think back northbound. It looks like me. I think this pursuit Glenn is starting to take. It looks like this guy is basically. Uh, Go ahead. It looks like this base. Uh, this this guy is basically in the same eight, the same general vicinity where this mm -hmm. uh, all kicked off about half an hour ago. He's kind of been circling a couple of. Uh oh, wow! Almost so came up close. on crash traffic mm -hmm. there and. Uh, Wow, we almost had another collision there, my goodness. He is basically eastbound approaching the Harbor Freeway at this point, but uh, this is basically the general vicinity where this all kicked off, and so this uh, may be an area of familiarity to this guy here, and as he comes right. up to that uh, intersection up there, Figueroa, there the are uh, a couple of officers yeah. uh, waiting there, and he just got spike stripped. Uh, I believe he may have been spike stripped there. Hopefully they got him, and uh, that might help uh, to disable this guy's car, but uh, here he is back now uh, eastbound on the major street there, and so, yeah, this is most uh, uh, this, uh, logically, this seems like uh, an area of familiarity because this is uh, the same general vicinity where this all kicked off, and this is uh, kind of where he's returned to. So like uh, here we are uh, traveling through some uh, commercial and residential mm -hmm. areas at a very high rate of speed. So we will uh, kind of follow this around and uh, see, what, uh, see what this guy does. Well, we're starting to see a lot of pedestrians out on the street, so obviously the word's getting out. People have been watching the news, and the word's getting around. So, uh, you know, we've seen these situations before where the longer these go on, they start to attract a crowd. Yeah. People start anticipating. They start standing on the street corners and waving and and cheering or whatever. Um, hopefully, they're rooting for the police in the, in this situation. But uh, you just don't know. It's crazy. See those people running back there? Now, mm -hmm. oh, look at that! Again on the wrong side of the street. Whew. I I'm wondering if he did make contact with that spike strip because he seems to be really out of control at this point. Well, I don't he see the tire, but the tires aren't smoking. You don't yeah. see the tires smoking, so. Now he's going down, looks like another coming alley. Through an alley. Coming through an alley. Coming through an alley northbound. Now he's going to be making a right-hand turn off to the east. He's going to be coming up on uh, some uh, traffic here, some LAPD traffic waiting at the intersection. Now turning southbound. And you hate to anticipate how this is going to end because this is a guy that's not going to go easy. Yeah, you no. know. He's okay. Mark, you think at almost some point that one of the, uh, an officer at one of these intersections would try to T-bone him? Well, you know what, Glenn? I don't. Uh, I don't know about that. Uh, you know, you think uh, the best they might be able to hope for would be to would be to spin him at some point if uh, given the correct amount of speed here. But I will tell you, this neighborhood is thoroughly saturated with uh, LAPD officers here. I mean, again, this uh, just seems like a uh, like a familiar area to him, and so there are officers uh, at several of the intersections. Uh, but uh, however, having just said that, uh, he's just going to be coming up on a bus here. My gosh, turning northbound. Uh, you know, at the at the rate that he's kind of ripping through these. Uh, Small streets and coming up on major, uh, major, you know, intersections here. I'm just surprised that he hasn't T-boned uh, an officer or someone else. We have already seen uh, several accidents already uh, directly involving this guy coming, uh, just coming too fast uh, and blind into intersections here. So now he's northbound. Uh, you know, I will, I will say that he's probably traveling a little bit slower than he was at uh, at its peak. Maybe that uh, van is uh, showing some signs of wear, or maybe it's uh, slightly disabled. We just don't know at this point. Uh, you know, here he's going to be making a right turn and. Uh, mm -hmm. There he is, and he's just tried to make the right turn a little bit too fast, and now he's going to try and get out of this. And so he has been uh, uh, able to do so uh, countless times before, and now uh, now here's another time. He is just uh, now he was basically taking that turn too fast, and he uh, couldn't make the turn, and so he just got pinned up against the curb there and, uh, and the vehicle. But um, he is able to get, uh, get out of that one, as we have seen time and time again at this point. So, uh, again, he's just kind of making his way, uh, making the round through the neighborhood here, uh, east, west, north, and south through this residential area, just south of the Coliseum by about uh, three to five blocks at this point. But he's just kind of making his way around. I can't believe how many times he's gotten out of a predicament here. We've uh, seen... Yeah, and he backed up and hit uh, another black and white yep. unit. So that's another charge of uh, uh, assault with a deadly weapon. And this is... Uh, Hey, it's just amazing he's, he's lasted as long as yeah. he has. Okay. He really is, considering I've the damage to, to that vehicle, and uh, he just continues to and go. And that they can't 
corner him in. They're yeah. so close every time, and, and he gets away. Well, it looked like they were going to try a pit maneuver that yeah. uh, intersection a couple of, you know, about 30 seconds ago, but there was another vehicle sitting there, so there's no way they could do that. And you see there are a pedestrian there running to get out of the way. Okay. Again, uh, if you're just joining okay. us, uh, you're watching uh, The View from Sky 5. Uh, this is a cargo van that was stolen in South Los Angeles uh, near the L.A. Coliseum in Expedition another Park. And it looks like they, another spike, spike strip. strip. Spike strips. There we go. Good job. Good job. Great placement on that spike strip. Uh, as he was coming around that uh, intersection, they laid down the spike strip, and uh, apparently he ran right over it. So uh, this vehicle does seem to be moving a little bit slower, although uh, having said that, he is trying his very best to get away and evade uh, capture at this point here. Several officers of the LAPD are stationed around the neighborhood here, and uh, you know, given the fact that they were able to lay down spike strips at that uh, particular intersection tells us that uh, yeah, he has been kind of making the rounds uh, through that same intersection. So uh, they are uh, not able to predict his moves uh, so much but they know uh, that uh, he is kind of working his way around this same neighborhood. So uh, by that, they have been able to lay down those bike strips and hopefully uh, uh, do a little bit more damage to the van and uh, hopefully bring this to an end. You know, Mark, we always uh, see that when the, these pursuits get to this point that they usually return to the neighborhood they're familiar with. They probably live there. What's amazing is he probably is a good bet that he lives in this neighborhood. Mm -hmm. But he also committed a crime in the same neighborhood. He stole a van. I mean, somebody's probably going to know him and turn him in for the stolen vehicle if he'd have gotten away with it. It seems like you would have committed the crime, you'd yeah. go to another neighborhood. Yeah, you would think. You would think. But, uh, you know, who you know, can attest to the, you know, logic of, right. you know, what these guys do and, you know, why they do things. But, uh, He's literally yeah, we, going I don't in know circles. for sure that the van is from this particular neighborhood, but, uh, he definitely knows, uh, well, he certainly, uh, seems right to know a little bit about the layout of this neighborhood here in terms of, uh, streets and, uh, you know, where to turn. And, uh, he just seems to kind of know the ins and outs of this neighborhood. So he has been just, uh, kind of making the rounds, uh, over, uh, say, a five to 10 block square, uh, radius here. And, uh, he continues to do so. Yep. They're getting him at each stop sign, though. I mean, he's ran over multiple. And then now an officer just pulled back a yeah. woman there on the corner. Somebody was yelling, yeah, ran, ran out in the street and was Somebody yelling at was him. Somebody was yelling at him. Maybe someone okay. he knows, like Glenn said, if he does live in this neighborhood, there could be relatives, you know, asking him to stop. Okay. He's this coming looks down to the be alley. an alley. He's turning down another alley. And, you know, and the officer's right behind him. But you think at this point, just give it up. I mean, you're yeah, not, you're not getting thinks, away. You, you, there's the chance okay. of you getting away passed a long, long time ago. But he continues to... If he makes the right turn here. If he makes the right turn, half a block down is where uh, is where that officer pulled that woman back. So we will see. It looks like uh, this may be an area of uh, familiarity mm -hmm. here. Uh, he has gone through that intersection now, and uh, that was the intersection that we just saw that officer and that woman just he a moment ago tires. here. Yeah, he has sure. just passed that intersection. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, this van is definitely uh, disabled and on its way uh, uh, to, you know, slowing down even more. So hopefully they can bring this to an end. Okay. It sure seems like that is going to be the case at this point. He just steps out of the van. He is just running. He's foot bailed into uh, this kind of shopping center here. He's in the parking lot. Uh, LAPD guys are in pursuit on foot. He is uh, just kind of making his way around. But uh, I would uh, suspect that uh, oh, he, he slips, slips, and that is that's what's going to do him it. in. So he slips and falls, and that's what did him in. The LAPD uh, able to swarm this guy, basically, and bring this to an end. Uh, wow, what an amazing pursuit, my goodness. Well, it doesn't look like he's given up very easy. I mean, we've got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, they keep coming. They keep coming. They have got a struggle on their hands. Okay. Yeah, this is a Vermont just south of 43rd where this, uh, where this just came uh, to a termination or where the pursuit just came to termination here. Uh, but you can see uh, they... <laughs> Yeah, there is no shortage of officers here uh, ready to take this guy into custody here. He has uh, led this uh, this police force on a pursuit uh, for the, uh, well, at this point, for the better part of half an hour, even longer. Uh, this pursuit basically started uh, right in this general neighborhood here, and uh, that is where it ends. But, uh, yeah, this is on Vermont here, just south of 43rd, and this is uh, going to be tied up for quite a while for the investigation here. But, uh, yeah, there you go. This uh, uh, suspect, this uh, stolen vehicle suspect, has now been taken into custody. Okay, Mark Cono up in Sky 5, and uh, look at him, he's actually laughing.